So what Kubernetes gives us is the ability to look at our entire system as a single entity. Today I'm going to talk about why Kubernetes is such a compelling option and uh, we can talk about the reasons why uh, people are often talking about Kubernetes and how it's so pow powerful. So once again, I'll start by perhaps mapping out where you might be on your journey, particularly if you might be looking at Kubernetes as an option. So perhaps you're running on a mainframe at the moment, perhaps you're running on some in-premise, on-premise uh, hardware, and perhaps you're looking at moving to the cloud. So once again, there's lots of options uh, available to you. Uh, the key ones which you might have heard of, uh, AWS, GCP, Azure, but there are plenty of other cloud um, providers out there. Uh, these key ones are important because they do offer a Kubernetes offering. So let's look at why it's so powerful or how it's so powerful. So perhaps in the past, um, when we're moving to the cloud or even if we're running on our own hardware, we might have a machine and perhaps this might be a virtual machine, but let's just go back here and we'll call this the cloud and we'll call this a mainframe so we don't forget where we are. So let's um, go to this option here that perhaps we've gone to the cloud and in this environment, let's assume we have two services running on a single machine. So for many startups, this is perfectly valid setup. Um, perhaps there's not a lot of traffic going to their system. Perhaps if they go down occasionally, it's not the end of the world um, and it can reduce costs, which is perfectly valid. But for, for many organizations, eventually they get to the um, point where they need better uptime characteristics. So they might start adding two machines running in their cloud. And this then allows them to have some kind of a load balancing service layer, which allows them to direct traffic to one or the other, uh, which means that if this box goes down, they still have um, availability and they can still serve their customers' needs. But handling this situation can get quite heavy quite quickly and eventually you need almost armies of people to keep this infrastructure up and running. There's a lot of complexity around how you uh, send requests to different services. Uh, there's a lot of complexity around how you make sure you've got enough instances up and running. And this is really where Kubernetes becomes particularly powerful. So. Um, if I end up writing Kubernetes again, I'll make it easier for myself. So you may have seen um, Kubernetes written at K8S. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So K8S. Okay, so, so let's um, look at a slightly different uh, view of the world. So here we have the um, the way of managing things ourselves, running things ourselves, which can work perfectly fine. But if, if you have a lot more customers and you have a lot more require, uh, requirements around scalability um, and, and automation, it can get quite difficult. So let's look at the world in a Kubernetes view instead. So what Kubernetes gives us is the ability to look at our entire system as a single entity. Instead of having to really think about building and deploying each of these components, it gives us all of those things out of the box, such as um, the ability to, to have um, service lookup and load balancing, the ability to determine how many um, versions or how many, um, what the count is of each particular service within the system. That's all part of um, the actual Kubernetes framework. So let's look at a few key concepts and then we can look at how Kubernetes can help us. So here we've got two what we'll call worker nodes. Let's imagine a cluster where we have three of these worker nodes. 
And instead of having to manually deploy or um, have, have our own custom logic for deploying code to these different boxes, we can actually just have what's known as a deployment. And we can say, actually, I just want three copies of this service running in my cluster. I really don't care where. And perhaps let's imagine that this, let's um, imagine we're building a bank here and maybe these are the payment rails. And perhaps maybe we've got a, a credit scoring service running here as well. So what this really gives us here is let's imagine that um, we've got an issue with our cloud provider or perhaps there's just an issue with um, a particular region. And let's imagine, as much as I don't like crossing out beautiful pictures I've just drawn, let's imagine that we actually lose that node. So in the past, there would have been really difficult. So let's actually do that here. So that would have been pretty horrible day at work just there. But here in the new world of, of Kubernetes, what it actually does for us is it automatically realizes that hap has happened. At the point that that dies, it'll push these services somewhere else in the cluster. It'll bring back a new node, and then it'll rebalance those across to this new node, which it brought up, all on its own. So in a way, we almost don't even need to know what happened anymore. It becomes just an ordinary event. Other things which we can do as well. So, so let's say we said that this, um, pink node was our, let's do pink is our payment. Let's imagine that's our payment rails. And perhaps this blue one, we said that was our credit scoring service. So our credit scoring service really has way lower requirements of uptime or um, latency, whereas payment rails have really high requirements. So perhaps we're heading into you know, Black Friday or a, another large event. So perhaps we can actually think ahead and say, well, you know what? Let's actually spin up a few more worker nodes and then spin up a few more instances of this service in anticipation. And this is all incredibly easy to do. Um, and it's all driven by a configuration. Um, other things which we now have as a benefit is previously we probably up here had to write a whole heap of custom logic and we were probably very highly coupled with one of these items here. Suddenly, if we've built everything inside of a Kubernetes cluster, this means that we have a certain level of portability. So if in the future we, let's say for example, the first version we have running in AWS, Perhaps we have a new customer in the future which needs to run in, a, in an environment or a regulatory environment where perhaps they can only use Azure or GCP. So suddenly we have this ability to move between environments a lot easier. So not only have we made our life easier day to day, not only can we deal with what used to be pretty horrible critical um, situations, not only can we now very easily scale up and scale down our services, um, but we can also now migrate to entire other clouds um, and we're not necessarily as coupled to other companies' logic, to other companies' cadence of delivery. Um, so there's plenty more actually to talk about Kubernetes and I've really just scratched the surface from a view of just thinking about why would you really contemplate moving to it and, and why is there so much discussion around it? Um, it's definitely worth digging a lot more into this. Um, but I hope you've enjoyed this discussion and I hope you've learned a few things. Um, if, you, if you like this, uh, please do like this video and please do share.